So in general design practices it's not usually practical to do a full probabilistic analysis of your design problem. So instead what is done is what is sometimes called load resistance factor based design or load material factor based design where partial scaling factors are used that are calibrated to our target reliability. So as a reminder the basic idea of a partial factor is to give you an approximate estimate of uh, where the design point is. So ideally you want to design your structure for the conditions at the design point um, but you don't necessarily know where the design point is. So in an ideal case let's say you know where, what your mean parameter values are then, uh, then you can multiply the mean values by some uh, adjusting factor which we call the partial factor to get to the design point. Now in reality we want to be able to apply the same partial factors to a broad range of conditions and we generally don't know what the mean values are so we and so instead we use conservative estimates for their values um, which uh, are generally referred to as characteristic values or sometimes nominal values. So in that sense then the partial factor uh, is a value that we multiply our characteristic values by to get a estimated design point um, which will fall somewhere in the vicinity of the actual design point. So, so as an example let's look at the partial factors from the South African loading code um, SANS 10160. And specifically what I'm going to illustrate is the motivation behind having separate structural limit state SDR and SDRP that correspond to cases where the uh, self weight dominates versus cases where it does not. So um, let me point out that if you have a self weight and a imposed load acting on your structure the, the corresponding partial factors in the unfavorable case would be 1.12 and 1.35 in the um, for, for the self weight and 1.6 and 1.0 for the imposed load. Uh, so say that the total lo load effect, uh, which we'll denote as E, is uh, the result of our self-weight and imposed load. Then we can write a, a characteristic value for it. And in terms of the characteristic values of the um, self-weight and the imposed load, we can have a equivalent design load of it using our individual partial factors for the self-weight and the design load. And it is the values of, of these that we're going to explore here. Now we can also uh, define an effective partial factor for our total load effect, uh, again just in terms of the ratio between the design value and the characteristic value, and express that partial factor in terms of the partial factors for the self-weight and the imposed load uh, by taking into account um, this parameter chi which uh, which gives you a relative measure of the contribution of the imposed load to the total load effect. Now if we adjust for the relative contributions uh, to the reliability from resistance and load effect terms uh, we can determine a probability of failure which we can then write in terms of the um, partial factor and from this determine our reliability index. Now we can solve this equation numerically for a given target value of reliability which in our case here is 3, so it's this black dotted line, to find the value of our, uh, of our equivalent partial factor for the load effect um, as a function of different values of chi. And when we do that we find this dotted curve up here. So what this dotted curve represents are the minimum values that this equivalent partial factor must take uh, to ensure that we at least satisfy our requirements of the minimum reliability value. And what we're going to do now is, is look at how the, the choices of partial factors that are given in uh, SANS 10160 um, relate to that minimum curve of ours. So let's first consider just the end member cases here where where we either have only the self-weight uh, 
or only a imposed load. Obviously these two cases would, would correspond to cases where you only have the action from the one partial factor or from the other, which suggests values of 1.6 and let's say 1.35 um, for, for those two individual partial factors. The problem is that if you have a mixture of imposed and self-weight values, uh, so, which is to say for intermediate chi values, um, the linear combination between these two end member values, which would be given by this green curve, ends up giving you reliability values in this intermediate range that are very far above your, your target value. Um, and so you so so you will tend to severely over design your structure if you if you were to if you were to use a single limit state for all combinations of imposed load and self weight. Uh, so instead the domain in terms of chi um, is split in two uh, with a separate set of partial factors applied in each of these two parts. So there's a part where the self weight dominates and there's a part where the imposed load dominates and two separate sets of partial factors are chosen for each one of these. If you do that the values that are given in SANS 10160 uh, will give you these two lines this blue curve and this red curve and you can see that the, the reliability values that correspond to those two curves are still above our target value but far more balanced and uh, uniform across the range of chi values. Now of course a lot of thought um, went into actually choosing these particular values and choosing this particular uh, point of, of intersection um, and the idea here was just to illustrate the process after the fact. Now when we look at partial factors for material parameters the idea of a partial factor as a scaling of interval bounds um, emerges quite nicely. So rewriting our earlier scaling equation by which the design point is estimated, we can define the partial material factor as the ratio of the characteristic value and the design value of our material parameter. And then simply apply the, the, the expressions that we have for different uh, interval bounds that we derived in an earlier lecture to this equation. Now remember that the design value represents a fractile that corresponds to the probability of failure, which is to say it corresponds to a standard normal value uh, of the sensitivity of the, that the material parameter times the target reliability. So this gives you a Z of alpha value corresponding to, where, uh, corresponding to your probability of failure. Similarly, the characteristic value will will have some associated um, confidence bound on it. It is uh, in in a South African context, it is generally ninety five percent. In the European in the Eurocodes, it's it's generally ninety eight percent. And you'll also recall that the standard normal value corresponding to a ninety five percent uh, interval bound, um, where this is ninety five percent, is one point six five. So if our material parameter is normally distributed, we can determine both of these as, as, as bounds on simple normal intervals, uh, being the 95% and the probability of failure uh, fractals. And now looking at how the corresponding uh, partial factor varies with different beta values and different uh, coefficients of variation, we see the, 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 the partial factor values that we would obtain. So for a value for, for a target beta value of three, you would you would find the, these partial factor values uh, depending on how uncertain your parameter is. And for a beta value of 3.8, as in the Euro codes, you might find this again, depending on how uncertain your parameter is. This is for a normally distributed random variable. Generally, we represent material parameters as log normally distributed, in which case the, the, the respective fractiles are given using these equations, which we derived in an earlier lecture. And in fact, for uh, coefficient of variation values less than about 0 0.2, you can simplify this ratio to get this um, expression. 
So if we again plot uh, the, the, the corresponding partial factors as a function of beta and our uh, coefficient of variation for a log normally distributed um, material parameter, then for a target beta value of 3, we get these partial factor values. And for a value of 3.8, you'll get values sort of over there, again, depending on how uncertain your parameter is. Okay, that concludes our lectures on structural reliability.